Good morning. Bobby, please read the problem and Bo, please translate. Flippin' physics. A uniform 0.093 kilogram meter stick is supported at the 15 centimeter and 92 centimeter marks. When a 0.250 kilogram object is placed at the 6.0 centimeter mark, what are the magnitudes of the forces supporting the meter stick? The mass of the meter stick is 0.093 kilograms, and the mass of the object is 0.250 kilograms. I suppose we should draw a picture of the meter stick supported at the 15 and 92 centimeter marks with the object on the meter stick at the 6.0 centimeter mark. I'm not sure what to do with those distances right now. Uh, we're solving for the forces caused by the supports, which are both normal forces, so force normal one and two each equal question mark. That, that's all I've got right now. Uh, we can draw a free body diagram of all the forces acting on the meter stick. Yeah, the force of gravity on the meter stick acts down at, well, the, the meter stick is uniform, so the force of gravity acts at the center of mass of the stick, so right in the middle at the 50 centimeter mark. The force of gravity on the object pushes down on the meter stick at the six centimeter mark. Let's say force normal one acts up on the support at the 15 centimeter mark and force normal two acts up on the support at the 92 centimeter mark. This is a good start. Billy, what should we do from here? Well, the net force in the y direction on the meter stick equals the force of gravity acting on the object, which is negative because it is down, plus the force number, number one, which is positive because it's up, minus the force of gravity acting on the meter stick, minus because the force of gravity is down, plus force normal number two, which is also positive because it is up. Uh, the net force in the y direction acting on the meter stick also equals the mass of the meter stick times the acceleration in the y direction of the meter stick. However, the meter stick is at rest, so its acceleration in the y direction equals zero. Oh, uh, oh, it is in translational equilibrium. And we can substitute mass times acceleration due to gravity for both forces of gravity. Uh, but we don't know either force normal, so this is one equation with two unknowns, which we cannot currently solve. Equation holster. Equation, equation holster. That is correct. We cannot currently do anything more with the net force equation. So we put it in our equation holster for when we need it later. Now, notice the meter stick is not moving. In fact, it is also not rotating. This means it has zero angular velocity and zero angular acceleration. Oh, it is in rotational equilibrium. The, the meter stick is not only in translational equilibrium, it is also in rotational equilibrium. That is correct, Billy. Remember, this is a special case where the object is at rest, is not rotating, and is in what we call static equilibrium. When an object is in static equilibrium, the net torque acting on the object equals zero about not just one axis of rotation, but any axis of rotation. Therefore, in this problem, we can set the net torque equal to zero about any axis of rotation. Bobby, could you please do that? You want me to find the net torque about an axis of rotation, but, but the meter stick is not rotating. Correct. Therefore, you can pick any axis of rotation and the net torque will always equal zero. Please give it a try. Okay, the net torque acting on the meter stick with an axis of rotation at one end. I, I don't know, does it matter where we put the axis of rotation? Let's put the axis of rotation at the location of one of the normal forces. Oh, right, because then the torque caused by that force normal will be zero. Okay, let's pick force normal one or the 15 centimeter mark as our axis of rotation. The net torque then equals the torque caused by the force of gravity on the object, plus the torque caused by force normal one, plus the torque caused by the force of gravity on the meter stick, plus the torque caused by force normal two. I thought the torque caused by force normal number one was zero because torque equals the R value times force times the sine of the angle between the direction of R and the force. And because the axis of rotation is where the force normal number one acts on the meter stick, the R value for force normal number one is zero, which makes the torque caused by force normal number one equal to zero. And shouldn't the torque caused by the force of gravity on the meter stick be negative because it would cause the meter stick to rotate clockwise or into the board, which is negative? Right, but the torque caused by the force of gravity on the object and the torque caused by force normal two 
are both positive because they would cause the meter stick to rotate counterclockwise or out of the board, which is positive. Uh, all that equals rotational inertia times angular acceleration, but the angular acceleration of the meter stick is zero, so the net torque acting on the meter stick equals zero. Bo, please keep going from there. For each torque, we can substitute in the equation for torque Billy just mentioned. Uh, the angle in each of those torque equations is 90 degrees because each r, the distance from the axis of rotation to where the force is applied, is horizontal, and each force is vertical. The sine of 90 degrees equals 1. So now we have r for the object times the mass of the object times acceleration due to gravity minus r for the stick times the mass of the stick times the acceleration due to gravity plus r for normal force 2 times normal force 2 all equal to 0. Move everything but r2 times normal force 2 over to the other side and divide by r2 to solve for normal force 2. Uh, now we need the distances or r values for the stick the object, and normal force, too. Billy, please determine those three torque R values. Well, 15 centimeters equals 6 centimeters plus R for the object. Therefore, R for the object equals 15 minus 6, or 9 centimeters. 15 centimeters plus R for the meter stick equals 50 centimeters. Therefore, R for the meter stick equals 50 minus 15, or 35 centimeters. 15 centimeters plus R for the force normal number 2 equals 92 centimeters. Therefore, R for force normal number 2 equals 92 minus 15, or 77 centimeters. We can now substitute all our values into the equation for which Bo just solved. Uh, force normal number 2 equals the quantity 35 times 0 0.093 times 9.81 minus 9 times 0.25 times 9.81, all divided by 77 which equals 0.12804, or 0.13 with two significant digits. Uh, and the units are newtons. Uh, uh, we need to convert all the R values from centimeters to meters, because newtons are kilogram meters per second squared. Mm. So multiply all R values by one meter over 100 centimeters, and substitute all those new R values back into the equation, and we... We get, we get the exact same answer we got before. That's weird. That is because if you substitute all the units into the equation, uh, you can see the centimeters cancel out, and we end up with kilogram meters per second squared, which are newtons. So we did not actually have to convert to meters. That's, that's weird. It is a fine habit to convert your values to base SI units. However, you are correct that we actually did not need to convert the R values to meters in this particular problem. Okay, we have solved for force normal number two. Anybody know how we can solve for force normal number one? Oh, we use the equation holster. That is correct, Billy. We can use the equation we previously placed in our equation holster. May I do it? Sure, go ahead. Uh, we can solve the equation for force normal number one and substitute in no values to get force normal number one equals 0 0.25 uh, times 9.81 uh, minus 0 0.12804 plus 0 0.093 times 9.81, which equals uh, 3.23679 or 3.2 newtons with two significant digits. Correct. Now realize we also could have solved for force normal number one by summing the torques and picking a different axis of rotation. This is because the meter stick is at rest and therefore in static equilibrium, which means the net torque acting on the meter stick about any axis of rotation equals zero. But you know we have to check our predictions, right? I've replaced the dominoes, which were supporting the meter stick, with force sensors. And you can see right now those force sensors are reading zero. And you can see when I add the meter stick, the forces, oop, the forces go up. And then when I add the 250 gram mass at six centimeters, you can see... <laughs> 
there it is. <laughs> I think you would agree with me that it matches our predictions and we can say, the physics works. The physics works, uh-huh, uh-huh. The physics works. The physics works, uh-huh, uh-huh. The physics works. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.